Well, hello there, everybody. Sam Strains here, and welcome not back to the railway, but to the service table. <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting to hear that. But yeah, the restoration videos that I made uh, have been very popular, so I thought it would be nice to do another one. So yeah, I'm going to be restoring uh, this logo here. Uh, it came in the post this morning. It's Nella Hall, uh, with a silent K, presumably. So maybe it's Knella Hall, I don't know. But it doesn't work, so I thought I'd try and restore it today, uh, see if we can get it to work. Uh, now, this isn't going to be a tutorial as such, um, and I have got videos that are tutorials if you'd like to see that. Um, but uh, this is just really a laid back, sit down, relax, and uh, let's try and fix something. And, uh, you know, you might learn something along the way. And, of course, I won't be offended if you already know all this stuff and don't want to watch the video. Uh, but then again, it's fine if you do know all this stuff and, uh, you know, just want to watch it for the enjoyment of it. So, yeah, let's see if we can uh, get this sorted then. So I'll get rid of the tender. And the procedure with this is, you know, when something doesn't work, I like to just give it a full service. And uh, for two reasons, really. Firstly, um, sometimes a full service can fix things, um, you know. It might just do the job. But secondly, if you're doing a full service, you'll probably notice um, if there's any massive blinding problems with it, you'll probably notice while you're doing it. So it's always worth just give it a full service first, really. So uh, let's take the chassis out of the body then. And uh, I'm on my best behavior today, so you can see I've put it straight into the cradle. And the screw for this one is at the back. And this model is one of those sort of early Hornby, late trying models. I believe it's got an X03 or an X04 in it. I suppose we'll find out. I've not had this apart yet. All I know is I put it on the track and it doesn't work. But it would get a service anyway, so it's not put me out or anything. Right. Let's pull this out. I always feel a little bit awkward taking these bodies off. You've got to slide it forwards, but I don't want to do it any damage. There you go. Oh yes, it's an X03. You can tell because it's got the nylon uh, worm instead of a brass or copper one whatever the other one was. Uh, okay, so let's get the motor out then, and uh, we'll deal with the chassis and the motor separately, so it's the same procedure as always. Uh, I reckon someone's been in this one though, because this copper plate, or yeah, this copper plate's been bent, so if I can't rectify that, oh dear, um, I'll have to probably solder straight to the brush, um, which is fine too. Now let's see if we can get this motor out, bend all this out of the way. There we go. And the screw is a little bit rounded off as well, so it looks like someone's tried to get in. But, you know, the motor doesn't look bad, does it? It looks... well, it's not blackened with soot, so that's good. Still not got this screw out. I thought I had. There we go. It was just plain a bit hard to get. Right, let's see if we can bend this copper plate back into place then, because it really shouldn't be bent like that. Oh yes, it's just snapped straight off. Okay, so that's going to be a solder job later. Bugger. Um, I haven't got any more power sockets for my soldering iron, but we'll have to see what we can do with that. Uh, just get these brushes to tumble out then. There we go. There's the brushes. Obviously you've got to look after those. That's all right. There's a bit of crap from the plate, you know, the contact plate that came out. Never mind. Right, there's the motor. I'll put the chassis to one side for a moment. Uh, the motor really doesn't look all that bad, to be honest. Let's uh, take this spring off. There you go look after that as well. Now let's just test the magnet. The magnet's really good. I will remagnetize it though, just, just in case. Uh, but yeah, no, that magnet's pretty good. Uh, right, so let's clean up the commutator then. Firstly, I've just spotted a little bit of fluff or something, which I'll probably get out with the tweezers. Well, I'll try to. There we go. That's it. Right, so all I'm going to do here then is just grab my cotton buds. Let's get a few of them out, because we're going to need a handful and some lighter fluid. Always handy. Get the lid open here. There we go. And this piece of paper is going to get grotty from now on, so I apologise. So let's just get a little bit of lighter fluid on the cotton bud. There we go. And let's clean up that commutator as the usual uh, I don't know, convention is. It's not that bad, to be honest. I don't think it would have caused a problem, but you know, if you take that apart, you might as well do it. And in between here as well, because that's where the mess collect, collects up. That looks good. Let's clean out the gaps, and I'm just using a needle for that really. And we'll just clear out these gaps here. Normally I've got a towel down here instead of a piece of paper, but it was so damn dirty after all my servicing, I thought I'm embarrassed to show that on camera, so I've got a piece of paper instead. And I suppose it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, which is good. 
Right, um, I won't stick the oil on it yet. I'm just going to test this to make sure it's working right. And I'll do that with the multimeter. Let's see here. This multimeter's had it, by the way. It's not a happy bunny, but it still seems to be testing resistance, all right? So set that to 200 ohms. You probably aren't going to read the dial because of the glare, but I'll read it out to you. And what we're looking for here um, is just to place both contacts on adjacent plates. That one is reading, wait till it settles, 8.8. .8. It's flickering between 8.8 .8 and 8.7, so remember that. Move on to the next one. That one's reading 8.6. So that's a little bit low, that's a little bit lower than 8.7. That's not a massive worry because it was flickering between 8.6 and 7 a little bit. And that one's jumping everywhere. I'm gone. There we go, we've got it. Uh, whoa. I saw it, I slipped, I slipped, but I saw about 8.8, .8, but we'll do it again just to be sure. See, that's why I don't like this multimeter anymore. It's not playing ball, it's not playing ball, but I saw 8.8, .8, so I think we're going to be alright with that. Whoops. <laughs> Uh, but I think it'll be pretty obvious if we're not, so we'll, we'll see how that is. The um, problem is I've got loads and loads of XO3 motors. Sorry, I've got loads and loads of XO4 motors, but I haven't got many XO3s. Well, I don't think I've got any. And uh, that means that's not a problem, but it just means you've got to get this nylon gear uh, worm off. And I don't like doing that. I mean, it can be done, but it's a big faff, isn't it? So I'm just going to put some oil on here then. There's no uh, bits of felt to put the oil into, so... Just gonna stick it on the bearings. That's pretty good. Yeah, that feels nice and loose. And uh, let's let's do the magnet while we're at it. Uh, so I'll just take this screw out at the top of the motor there. Let's adjust this camera while we're at it. There we go. So that's the screw out. Right, let's head over to the magnetizer then, and uh, we'll fix that. Right, so I'm just going to bang that in there, like that, and hit the button, and hit it again. Very nice. Get that out. Very good little tool, that. All right, so we'll see how we get on with that motor. It might get lucky, might not, uh, as I say. The multimeter let me down a bit, so never mind. Right, I'm just going to file up the brush spring, just so that's nice and clean. I've obviously, you've got to be careful with these, though, because they're a bit uh, brittle, but I've got loads of them. I've got absolutely loads of them. There they are. doesn't really matter too much, but you've just got to make sure it's got good contact, really, good electrical contact. The brushes, um, they don't look bad, really, but let's sort them out. Just going to make sure that's contacting nicely. It's no, it's not worth getting the Dremel out just to do little jobs like this, so I'll just do it with the end of a screwdriver. But obviously you've got to bear in mind that it's going to ruin them eventually, um, but I don't do it very often. Right, a little bit of uh, nail polish remover. No, nail polish remover. Those days are gone. Um, lighter fluid. <laughs> just clear up any debris, and I tend to clean the end as well, just so that we're starting off clean. And this one's in a puddle of it already. I've got a lake of lighter fluid on here, but you'll see how quick it dries. I bet you 30 seconds time it'd be gone. Right, let's stick this motor back together then. Now, because I'm on camera, I'm a little bit... I don't know. I'm on my best behaviour, so I don't know if I'll forget anything. I'll try not to. Just get that in, there you go. And put the little nut back in. Just turn it on myself first. And normally I'd be leaning in a bit closer here, um, but I don't want to get my head in the camera, but because I've not got very good eyesight at long distance, I might be a bit fumbly, but I think that's all right. Okay, let's stick this brush spring back in then, nice and easy. And this is so much easier to do, by the way, when the motor's out of the locomotive. I mean, it sounds silly and pretty obvious, to be honest, but I used to try and get these springs in, sorry, get these brushes in, while while it was you know while the motor was screwed onto the locomotive, you just can't do it. 
well you can, I've managed it, but I wanted to kill myself by the time I'd done it. Right, let's just give that motor a try then, and um, you'll normally get a good idea about whether it's going to perform well um, just by doing this. Now of course you have to bear in mind this has not got a load on it when I power this up, um, so you know it's probably going to run the best it will ever run without a load, um, so just bear that in mind. Come on now, I need my cables. There we go. So one on there, the other one clip on here. He, oops, that's the doorbell. Hang on. Oh dear, sorry about that. Yeah, wasn't a parcel for me, unfortunately. Right. Oh dear, I'm out of breath. That's very bad. I need to do more exercise. <laughs> right. Let's let's uh, add a little bit of power then. See if she works. Yeah. On the other way. Look at this. Stripe of oil. Filthy oil too. And the other way. To be honest, that looks alright to me. That does seem pretty good. Oh, you're going to have to live with this mess now. Never mind. Right. So that's a bit better. Get the helping hand out of the way. Now I'm just going to switch the soldering iron on now because once we've dealt with the chassis I'm going to want to solder that brush spring on. Right, so we'll clean the wheels once the motor's back on board because it just makes things easier. So let's just add a little bit of oil to the axles first. These are nice and tight. So they obviously haven't been taken out too often. There we go. this out, if I can, just bear in mind there's always a cable attached to that obviously. Right, yeah, we can get to those axles as is normally the case. I'm just going to get rid of some of this fluff. Someone's obviously like me and they run on the carpet, but I'm lucky with our carpet here because it's it's not fluffy at all and it doesn't seem to you know produce a lot of mess. Having said that, I always uh, vacuum the tracks before I run anything on it, so it's not really a problem at all. Right, that's that done. Um, and how are these contacts looking? Oh, they're shining, they are. So, it's not a big deal. Oops. So it's not a big issue, but I, well, you know where we've got it apart. Might as well just clean them up some, if we can. There we go. Just wipe these off. you got to make sure these are clean, because you're relying on them to run the loco. You know, if one of them or both of them uh, doesn't work, isn't making contact, um, you're not going anywhere, so <laughs> that's it. Right, now I didn't mean for this thing to come out, but it has, so uh, you've got to get it the right way, but I, I'm hoping this is going to be the right way. This gets me every time this does. There we go. Yes, I'm useless when it comes to that. It confuses me, I don't know why. It's not particularly confusing, is it? And there goes my little oil pen again, straight onto the floor. Right, while that's in place, let's screw these back in. Yeah, I'm a bit uh, ham handed as you can see, so. <laughs> Oops. On, you go. Won't tighten it yet, obviously. Get them both in first. Let's see the other one. There we go, let's see how that feels. I haven't oiled any of the valve gear yet and the linkage. We'll do that once it's all assembled. Right, let's put this motor back in then. Let's bang it back where it came from. If I can. There you go, that's it. Now let's make sure this wire is underneath. And it is. Good. Uh, which way are we going to put this in? Let's get that in first. Here's the screw worry about cable management after this has all gone back in. Let's move this out of the way, shall we? Must be very annoying. And tighten that up. I'm sorry if at any point my hands have gotten in the way of the cameras, by the way. I've got three cameras up and running, so I'm hoping it's not going to be too obstructive, but still. No, hang on, that's not gone in. That hasn't gone in yet. I'm wondering if that isn't the right screw because I noticed when it came out it wasn't very happy, was it? I wonder if somebody's put a bodge. I mean, it looks like the right sort of screw. 
I don't think it is. Hang on. Let's put this to the test. That is the kind of screw it should be. Put these back. You see, these are all from scrapped motors. So in a way I like it when a motor doesn't work, because I can scrap it and get all the parts for it. It's really useful. Right, now let's screw this back in. I'm hoping the thread hasn't been damaged at all. It shouldn't have been. Screw that in. Yes, it didn't come out very easily, did it? So I, I, I assume that's probably part of the problem. That's better. Right, that's gone in. That took a bit of coaxing, that did, but it's it's done it. Right, so bend that back here. It's going to be fine there. And uh, let's try and get this thing off then. Where's the helping hand? This is going to be quicker with the helping hand, I think. Where's the solder? Let's just try and get this off. I'm hoping it's just going to drop off. Yep. It off. Yep, that's alright. And let's try and tin up this brush. Yep, the brush. That's right. <laughs> I was going to say brush spring. Getting all uh, flappy. Right. You don't want this to be on for too long. There you go. Because you don't want to stop melting the plastics and whatnot. So I like to, I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but I, I like to try and keep the soldering iron on there for the shortest time possible. No, that's not going to happen. The wire is just a tiny bit too short. No, it's not. That's perfect. Okay, that's that. So, let's put a little bit of grease on the linkage and on the valves, of course. A bit of, whoa, that's a lot on there. And on here, it comes out quick. I don't really like these oiling pens, by the way. They're very useful for getting the gaps, but dear, oh dear. It doesn't half leak. There we go, I'll stick the lid on that in a second. Oh yes, and let's just put a little bit on the worm drive. Very nice. Right, let's clean the wheels then, assuming of course the motor will turn, <laughs> turn the wheels. So what I like to do with this, I get the helping hand and the magnifying glass. I don't know where that is, but it's very important because it tips over. So there's the magnifying glass, make sure it's all tight. And then flip this over, hold it there. You can tell I've done this a lot of times before, and hold it there, like that. Then it's just the same as I did when I tested the motor. Uh, I don't know if you can still see. Yeah, I think so. Right, so let's get these wires again. Right there. One on there. One on the bit I've just soldered. I can switch the solder iron off now. Right, make sure that bogey's not going to get in the way. I'm just going to go and power that up then and see if it works. Hold that. Well it is working now. Whether that's going to transmit to working on the tracks or not, I'm not sure. To be honest with you, that seems pretty happy, doesn't it? She does seem happy there. Right, let's leave her run for a second then. Sorry, that didn't make any sense. Um, and we'll just let the wheels get a little bit cleaner. So I made it sound like it's going to happen automatically. We'll just clean the wheels then. That's what I meant to say. It's easier to say that. A bit of fluff I noticed again. It is a bit fluffy this one. Someone obviously used this on the carpet. A little bit grubby. Not bad. The wheels aren't visibly dirty. You have to do it. These centre wheels don't actually touch the ground. My main camera's battery's just died, so I'll go and swap that after I've done this. There we go. And then on the other side, you should just clean the sides of the wheels where the pickups touch. That's quite important, so here we go. And this is normally the dirtiest part of the job. Yeah, 
very dirty. Right, let's top it then. Put it back together, see if we can get it to work on the track. Right. Let's get all this off. There we go, and get the helping hand out of the way. Ditch it over there. Now, I haven't cleaned the front bogey wheels, and I'm not sure I really need to in this case because it's so clean. Um, the seller, I can't remember, the seller on eBay said that it hadn't been used an awful lot, um, but it was his dad's or uncle's or something like that who'd sadly passed away. Um, so I'm just going to clean this, by the way. Um, so he didn't really know much about it. Um, but I thought, you know, I've not got Nella Hall, or however you say it, so it is in very, very good condition. I really do think so. And so is the tender, when we get that out. Don't know where I put the tender. Oh, it's over there, never mind. Uh, so let's stick this on. The tender wheels, by the way, weren't very dirty either. They were pretty clean. There we go. Now, I probably wouldn't normally stick the body back on um, until I've tried it on the tracks, but for the, you know, for the sake of being on video, I thought I might get lucky. Uh, but just so you know, this almost certainly means that it won't work when I put it on the track. And I say that for two reasons. Firstly, to try and tempt fate so that it will work. And secondly, because um, despite that, that's always the case anyway. Uh, so there's the loco. It's got my nice fingerprints on it now. But we'll worry about those later because, as I say, I'm sure it's not going to work. Uh, let's just have a look at the tender then. Here it is. Not bad. I mean, it's a bit dusty to say it's been in its box, but the boxes don't really do much to protect these old locos, especially because the, the front of it was all <laughs> decayed. But look at that. That's brilliant condition. doesn't really need a wash because it's just dust. But, yeah, you see, the, the, those tender wheels, to me, look very clean. Just fluffy, you know, bits of fluff on them. All right, well, let's take you down onto the railway then, and uh, we'll put her on the tracks, and I suppose we'll just see if it's any good. <laughs> right, be right back then. Right, let's jam her on the tracks then. Is everybody feeling nervous? I am. Right, there's the tender. Hang on, is the tender running all right? Yeah, it's going to be a noisy one, I think that. Perhaps needs a bit of uh, grease on it, but all right, we'll worry about the tender once the loco's sorted. All right, a little bit of juice then. Let's see. Hey, that's all right. No, oh, it's died on the points. There you go. <laughs> I was worried. I was worried myself then, but I hadn't got it turned up. That's good and smooth. That is, but that tender is twittering away like a like a bluebird or something. I don't know. Um, Perhaps needs a bit of oil, but I'll let her have a run in anyway, and uh, we'll see how she gets on. Um, but yeah, that was pretty good. I'm, I'm amazed that she works. I have to tell you what, I should always film my uh, restoration, shouldn't I? Because it always works well when I film them. It doesn't work like this in real life, trust me. Um, but yeah, that's that's good. I'm really pleased with that, and it's really, really good condition. It's probably the best condition haul class I've got. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit long-winded and I did ramble quite a bit, as usual. Uh, but not to worry. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and uh, well, like the video and uh, leave a comment if you'd like to. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all soon. Cheers, everybody.